Hello and welcome to Earth Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Minnesota. Thank you for joining me. Let me find you on my tablet. Interacting with uh, people who watch live is half the fun. All right, there we go. So hopefully you can see that. And I've got comments ready to go. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, you can get in touch with me through my website at northstarstamper.com. There's a contact um, form within my website. And that's also where you can sign up to receive my weekly newsletter where I share uh, Stampin' Ups specials and what's new and what's coming. I give you a heads up before things come and start and so you know what to expect. And then um, I also share inspiration in that every week things that you won't see other places. So hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. All right, I'm going to move my camera back out a little bit better. There we go. All right, so I had a request for, um, not a request for sympathy cards, a request that I talk about sympathy cards. So Diane watches me on YouTube. So Diane, as a thank you for this suggestion, Get in touch with me after you watch the video and let me know if you would like embellishments or ribbon. And I will get that in the mail to you this week. So, did any of you do the homework I gave you? I suggested that you go onto the internet. Here, I'll give you a card to look at while I chat. Um, I suggested you go on the internet and do a search on sympathy cards and then select images. And I'm curious if anybody did that and what you saw. Um, I did a little homework and I went to Hallmark. I hadn't been in Hallmark in years to look at cards. I like paper products, so I'd been in Hallmark for other things. But, um, so I went in Hallmark and I found their sympathy cards and I just glanced at them and I noticed that they were mostly muted colors, um, a lot of florals, a lot of earth related, you know, florals and twigs and vines and those kinds of things um and then i turned around and i don't even know what section was behind me and everything was so bright and um vivid um colors so this is the card that we're going to work with tonight and we're going to remake it in a couple different ways so if you go on to the so i'm curious did anybody do that go on uh, do an internet search if you're watching the replay, pause the video, go do that um, search and then select images and then come, but make sure you come back to the video um, and you'll see what I'm talking about, how even on the internet, if you look up sympathy cards or um, yeah, just sympathy cards and then select images, they're almost all pastels, calming um, colors for those that might be grieving. So um, that's where I'm work why I'm working with um, earth tones and mostly pastels with a little bit of color just to add interest. Um, and if you go to Stampin' Up! and search in Sympathy, the stamp sets that I have that they suggest for Sympathy are Quiet Meadow and um, so both Thinking of You and the Flowers which I used on here um, and this sentiment, Heartfelt Love and Caring Thoughts Are With You. Um, this sentiment, life has changed for you, but my love and support never will, is from the Elegantly Said. So this is another one that Stampin' Up! suggests for sympathy. I thought this was true love last, um, true love stories last forever. That'd be kind of nice if somebody loses a spouse. And then the other one Stampin' Up! suggests is the prize peony. I'm so sorry for your loss. You've seen me use that on a sympathy card before. And my thoughts are with you would be nice too. And just a simple floral image would be interesting. So I looked through my stamps and found other ones that would be appropriate for... So we have positive thoughts. You've seen me use these things a lot. Um, I know of several families who have lost... Um, let me think if they're both children, young people, like under the age of 20. I think they were. And they had stories about butterflies. Um, so if you know a story about the deceased and, or the family and butterflies remind them of their loved one, obviously use that. Um, I've also heard that cardinals 
um, could be um, that people think of cardinals as well. I had one more. Where'd it go? Butterflies. I have lots of butterflies. Um, actually, that's the same. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So, um, Hugs, Prayers, Love would be appropriate for a sympathy card. You've seen me use these a lot. Just some generic things. Um, I guess more just the backgrounds are, and things are the ones I was thinking of there. Always thinking of you. And then these um, would be nice backgrounds for a card like this. I've got a, just a couple more we're going to use. Um, I thought about using the backgrounds here, but I think I've decided to use this brick instead on the Path to Greatness. And then this was a celebration set. It has a really nice With Sympathy stamp in it, um, which you've seen me use that set recently. A couple more, and then, I'll sh then I'll, um, we'll actually get to making a card. Now, this is not something I do. I think I'm over the age of people that use the heart symbol with their hands. Um, but I know a lot of people do. So that might be nice on a sympathy card, you know, sharing, um, sending love to people. What else? Um, we'll get through this together. That would be a nice one, too. Um, I mentioned butterflies and cardinals. Um, maybe dragonflies remind... Um, the family of their loved one that has died. So lots of ideas. So look through your stamps and see what you have. Um, I mentioned butterflies. I know I'm rambling today. And this stamp, which you've, I think you've seen me use, it comes like this. It is a, um, they call it a background stamp because it is one. But I, there were times when I wanted to just use one of the butterflies and it was a lot, not a lot of work, but it just was cumbersome. To get up my Stamparatus, just ink up that one and put it where I wanted to go. So this stamp set was on sale last fall. So I bought a second one. You can see it is the same stamp. And I separated them. I literally cut them apart. And now I have, was that, six butterflies that I can use. So maybe we'll use one of these tonight on a card. I don't know. I have a whole bunch of things here on my table. And we'll see where we end up. So we're going to talk about this card. And we're going to remake it with different colors. Um, I used my small little block A to get my squares, and this one I spritzed with water. This one I actually spritzed with alcohol. My space here doesn't have good ventilation, so I had to step away when I made this card, so we will not be using alcohol. I made a second one, and I went into the bathroom and turned the fan on to get the fumes out of my face. So we'll be using this with water, and I have it all ready to go. I'm just battling. Any comments and questions? Did anybody do their homework and go? Um, if you're on a computer, open another tab and do a search on sympathy cards and then select images and tell us what you see. I'm curious if your experience was the same as mine. So this is crumb cake. Um... I think that's Old Olive. I use Pear Pizzazz. They're very similar. And then e, um, Early Espresso was my ink. So you can see I'm not using a lot of products. Me, I don't know. Can you see? Let me stand up and see if you can see that. Um, just to add some interest, I did emboss the um, cardstock layer there with, um, I think it's textured, tasteful, textured, Textiles 3D. Anyway, the colors we're using tonight, though, are Evening Evergreen, Soft Sea Foam, and Sahara Sand. So I already have pieces cut. So we're going to use a Sahara Sand base. And I cannot find my bone folder. It may have slipped into my bag somewhere. This one's rough, and I'm always afraid I'm going to... Um, mess up my cardstock. So we're going to stamp on the soft sea foam, and I use my mini machine, which is on sale this month for 20% off. So if you look at the price of it, the price of the mini machine, which, let me grab it, um, is basically the price of two punches. You can have a mini machine, and um, it opens up a whole new world with dyes and embossing folders. And you've seen me use the same ones over and over and over again. So even just with two dyes and two embossing folder sets, because Stampin' Up! is 
um, selling the mini embossing folders in pairs. So you could open up a whole new world. Um, it really changed my stamping. I didn't get it till I became a demonstrator, um, which I do regret. I wish I had gotten it earlier. Enough for my sales, my sales pitch. All right. Um, because the mini machine is three inches wide and this was three and a quarter, I did do it in two pieces and we're going to do this. So it's very similar. And let's stamp and I have an envelope. I'm going to try to remember to stamp on that. I'm going to move this away and grab some paper towel. This gets a little messy. So I'm going to move everything away. So we're going to stamp on here. I'll leave this here till I actually go to spritz it. And we're going to use our Stampin' Spritzer. Oh. Um, I did not think about what colors we're going to use. Let's try... Um, Sahara Sand was the card base. Let's try that. I know I have it here somewhere. This one. With all of our um, ocean and water themed um, products right now, it's um, kind of fun to pull out the Sahara Sand. All right, so I have a Stampin' Spritzer with just water. You can see I label mine with the W and the A for water and alcohol. Um, I'm going to move that to the side. So I'm just going to ink up my block. I guess you would consider this a direct-to-paper method. I'm going to turn it up so the ink is on the top. I'm going to spritz from kind of far away. I don't know if you can see. Let me stand up and see if you can see. All right. Um get my paper towel handy and the further away you spritz from the smaller the mist will be which I think works better so I'm going to spritz three times I'm going to dry that off because I don't want to get my paper all wet and then you can you see I just put that right onto there I haven't played with these colors so this is kind of new maybe that'll work let me stand up for me. I always like to see what you're seeing in the video. So there's, I re-inked my block. Oh, I was kind of close that time, and I'll show you the difference. There. We're going to do three. Again, clean it off. Ink, ink, ink my block. I like showing you ways to use your products that are a little... Out of the ordinary. So I'm way above the picture here because I want this a finer mist. And then put that down. So I think we're going to stamp on the envelope while this dries. So you can see, can you see the difference here? I think you can. I can. Oh, sorry. Kind of in the way. So I was further away when I did this one, and so it's a finer mist, and these were um, closer and just more wet. So that is just using your block in ink pad and a Stampin' Mist Spritzer. Or Stampin', Stampin Spritzer, I think they're called. All right. Um, let's see. I haven't decided what I'm going to stamp on this card. Let's try something different. How about the Dragonfly Garden in this, this one? Block isn't quite big enough. So we're gonna go sideways. I think I need my big long one, and I don't know. Oh, there. No, that's not it. I don't know where that block went. Um, we will ink in Evening Evergreen because that is the layer that I embossed. So so far, we're gonna use Evening Evergreen for our this floral spray, and then our sentiment, which I have no idea what it's gonna say yet. Let's get this done. Let's stamp on the envelope first. We're going to let that dry a little bit more. So here's our envelope. And we're just going to put the tip of the flower spray onto our envelope. And I have another fun stamp that I've been using. Um, I don't know if this is currently available. You can see it's well loved. It's a photopolymer and it's well stained. We're going to put this on the back of our card. I'll show you what it says. Um, yeah, and they're very much a uh, trading. Better than email. I thought that was kind of cute. 
All right. I think I can put these down. Sorry, I keep forgetting. I'm so involved in my card, and I was talking so much at the beginning. Thank you for sharing. Um, Anne says she likes, she likes, oh, Diana, thank you for sharing. Anne says she likes the embossed layer. I think it adds just a little bit. So I was trying to get professional designers' suggestions on sympathy cards. And I the only thing I came across, there were a lot of things that talked about what do you say on a sympathy card. And that's not quite what we're talking about um, today. So one said... Um, that your cards, they said, um, omit the bling. So to me, bling means rhinestones, jewels, those kinds of things. I think one or two might be nice, but yes, I wouldn't send out like a real glitzy card unless that is appropriate for whoever you're sending it to. So obviously keep them in mind when you're creating. Would be Okay, this is almost dry. We'll try it. And if it doesn't stamp properly, it's because my three squares are wet. So this is Evening Evergreen Ink. Ink, ink, ink. And I have ink around the edge, so I'm going to make sure I don't... Um, we're going to go up a little bit. I'm just going to push straight down, make sure I don't rock it. Otherwise, I'll get a halo. Very subtle. I like it. All right, and now for our sentiment. I need a small one or a tall one. Um, so a sympathy would work for that. Okay, we'll just well here. This one was this one was narrow in the price peony. The so sorry for your loss. That's a nice small stamp. So I'm going to use this a smaller block. Actually, I have a smaller one than that. Now, when using words, let me grab a piece of paper. I want to make sure that my words are going to be straight. I could um, use a positioner like our Stamparatus to make sure. But let me push this into the picture a little more. Oh, I have so much on my table. Good thing I have a big table. All right. So we're going to use this line thinking that that's the bottom of our card. And I kind of lined up loss um, along this line. You can see it's not quite straight. The L seems to be higher than the last S to me. So when I stamp on my cardstock, it's higher. So I'm going to move it just a tad. I'm going to go down right in the middle. There we go. And now it's straight. So I always test. Practice, 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 right? And stamp before you adhere. Obviously, I could not adhere and then stamp because it's not flat underneath. So let's get this card together. And I do have another idea. So what are your thoughts about uh, sympathy cards? I've made a few recently. I'm going to put more ink on the sides because it is not flat where I have the embossing. And because this is, um, I could have used dimensionals, but there we go. So sorry for your loss. What are your comments? I'd love to know what you think. Am I way off base? I don't know. That's just my thinking. All right, so there's card number one. I do have another card prepped with different colors. This was kind of fun. Um, so in, in addition to stamps, you could also use die cuts. So I have the meadow dies and the harvest dies. And I cut some out. Oh, I should have done that. I should have showed you this before I stamped. Anyway. And I use my mini machine. Um, again, the opening is a little over three inches, so I had to cut. So there, I, I, I can fit two on that. And I take your pick tool. Okay. 
This is uh, Mossy Meadow. And then I have Gray Granite and White. And I did practice with that one stamp to see what it would look like. I don't want to poke that. There we go. Oh, I was told an easy way to get adhesive on these. You know what, Kathy, I will share that next week. Kathy told me a way to get adhesive on these. So come back next week and we'll talk about that. So my thought was we could do this. So if you have die cuts and instead of stamps, we could do that. There's another idea. And that stamp was from the Path to Greatness, I think it's called. I have so many stamps with them. Path to Greatness. I haven't used this a lot, but I really like this building. So that was, I just stamped it twice in gray granite. And I think we'll put this on there. We're going to use that same stamp because it's already out. Already on a block. Mossy Meadow. There we go. All right, I have one more idea. Just to add, tell me what you think. I thought about adding. I'll move this out of the way. Oh, here. This is what I was thinking. I have so much going on. Um, instead of stamping this floral spray, I thought we could put a, um, a die cut. That would be nice, too. Maybe I'll make another card. All right. Um, I thought we could add some gold, some, what's this? Gilded leafing. Um, although this kind of goes against what I said earlier about using bling. What do you think? Should I put... A line and the easiest way I find and you've probably seen me do this is use tear and tape and I would put well, maybe across the top no I think down the side put tear and tape down the side and then add the gilded leafing what do you think while I get my card put together I'll let you know uh, Kathy says use um, and says sue you could use the paper you die cut from on the card Oh, and I like the way you think. Are you talking about this one? Yep. So let's see. Let's let's find a piece of paper that's not. I had one. There we go. So we're gonna put this on here. So are you talking about cutting it like this? Oh, that would be nice. Here, let's let's do that, Ian. Well, how are we doing on time? I do like to keep this. Oh, we're running out of time. I will finish this card and um, share it. So this is, we're going to go, I'm going to go five and a half. So it's the full length of the card. And then I'll have to decide, maybe I'll color something behind it. Or another idea. Let's just pretend. Uh, I have other cardstock here. I don't have this um, scored, so I can't hold it. What about that? You like that? Or do you want darker? And is this what you were thinking? Let me know. This this doesn't coordinate because they're greens of very different colors. You could put something dark, maybe brown, behind it. I kind of like that. Um, Kathy says emboss the white layer. So you're gonna, talking about embossing this. Um, you know what would be nice? And I've done this uh, with a few other cards. We're going to go along tonight. Kathy gave me a great idea. Kathy had a great idea. The embossing folder I'm thinking of does not fit in my mini machine, so I need my big one. And oh, I need two embossing plates. Oh, 
sorry, that was kind of noisy. a textile background I think this is still a current when you put any layer in here and it's fun to stamp it first and then we're just gonna emboss this I don't know if you can see in the in there because I have my big machine up maybe just one no what's wrong here Oh, that is a, this is a 3D. We have a different, we need a different plate. This is what happen, happens when I create on the fly. Like, oh, wait, wait, let's try this. Okay. So the textile embossing, I'm pretty sure that's still current. I think it's called textile 3D embossing plate. Embossing folder, sorry. When you emboss it, let me just stand up to see if you can tell. You can tell it's embossed. It feels like canvas. It's really fun to have a floral design and then run it through there and it looks like you've painted it. It's pretty amazing. Okay, what was I doing? I got distracted and put that through there. You know what? Oh, do we still want the gold on here? Um, Cardinese gold. This card needs the gold, the other the embossed. Tasteful textile embossing folder still available. Thank you, Kathy. Um, oh, I meant on the other card we were playing with. Well, lots of ideas. Lots of ideas. All right, so we need... I've lost track. This is the envelope for the other card. Put that over here. I haven't stamped on this one. Let's do that. There's a thin envelope. And this was our bricks. And gray granite. I pulled out my greens and browns and grays. And I have quite a stack of um, ink pads on my table. We have a lot of those. All right, just a little bit so that somebody knows that I created the card. Hopefully most people know that by now. So do we want to add gold to that? That might be interesting to see what happens when you add. We're going to do it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So we use. I know it's here. I have so much on my table. All right. Uh, tear and tape. And you literally tear it. We're going to put it right near the edge. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. Um, okay. So I didn't wrap it around the back. Because I can wrap it to the front and just keep the adhesive on the front. I have to take this liner off. You know me in liners. On live videos, we don't work well. Oh, I can Get that to stick to the cardstock, not the liner. I think I got it. I do not. Let's try the take your pick tool. Okay, so there. Take that liner off. You can see I have a little bit of adhesive there. I'm just going to fold it right back so that all the adhesive's on the front. This is kind of where the magic comes in. And I think we've talked about how if I use these small flakes, I get a different texture than if I use large flakes. The large flakes make a much smoother gold finish, I'll say. And if I use these small pieces of gold, it is um, a little rougher. So it's whatever you're looking for. 
this is going to be rough anyway because I've already embossed it. I'm trying to stay on camera. I don't know how I'm <gasps> doing. Let's get all this gold back into my tub. Very light. All right. As you can see, it's sticking. I'm going to push it down. I can tell where it, there isn't any because the adhesive is sticking to my thumb. And then I'm going to use this um, sponge. Oh, sadly, we don't carry these anymore. Hopefully you have some. If you don't have a sponge and you need a sponge, let me know. I think I bought some before they retired. I think a makeup sponge would, sponge would work. The dollar store may have some. All right. Let's use that. All right, now I want to make sure all my gold is back where it belongs. And I'll show you the finished piece. So we really did um, dress this one up, didn't we? We stamped, and then we ran it through an embossing folder, a very subtle embossing folder. If you have the old subtle embossing folder, it was very, very similar to the um, textile. And we have our envelope. All right, so there's that. We need our layer. We're going to use this. No, we're going to use green. Oh, you know what? Instead of adding another layer, I'm just going to do that. And then we'll adhere that. Okay. Glue. Being that it's textured, I'm going to go a little heavier on this glue than I normally do. I always, for some reason, I start in this corner. And then being liquid, I have a minute to adjust it if it's not quite right, but I think that's good. And just for added interest, I'm going to put uh, mini dimensionals where I can on here. And some of these are big enough to hold a dimensional. And then at the bottom, we're going to put some glue. Thank you for staying with me. I know I'm a little longer than normal. So I am... Oh, take the liners off my dimensionals. That one I think already did. All right. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are about sympathy cards. You know what? I have one more thing to share with you. It'll be worth it. Trust me. Trust me. Stay with me. One more thing. Then we'll bring these cards back out. So if that one goes with that. Where'd my other card go? I think I just kind of pushed it to the side. Again, Diane, let me know what, um, what you would like me to send you as a thank you for the suggestion for talking about sympathy cards today. I guess I was in the mood for green. You could easily use blue. Um, I did have my um, lighthouse stamp set out, but that one just didn't, wasn't speaking to me today. Um, oh, yes. The last thing I'm going to share. If you are um, using this card with a group of people. Oh, I had plenty. Actually, this will work. So this is just a regular card base, but this is basic white cardstock. I am going to trim a quarter of an inch off two sides. So now this is supposed to be oh, I did quarter, not half. So eight We'll just leave it there. So this is eight inches wide. I'm going to score this at four inches. Our cards are four and a quarter. 
So let's say this sympathy card is going to be from a group of people. And I think this is what actually happened to Diane. She made a card for a Bible study, I think she said, or quilting group. Anyway, let's say I want this to take this to my Bible study for lots of people to sign. So this is just smaller than your um, A2 card. I went a quarter of an inch smaller. So I could adhere this in here. So here's our card. I could stamp again here or stamp something there. It gives you lots of space to write. So if I had this card done and then I decide to take it with me for a group of people, you can add this after your card is done. You can add an insert. And I've done this before. Add another insert inside your card so lots of people can sign it. There we go. Thank you for joining me. I have another card somewhere. My, I'm not, oh, there we are. I was in the mood for greens. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. Thank you for staying with me. I'm glad you like them. Um, the embossing folder makes a card look more casual. I don't think I would use the gold now. Oh, sorry, Kathy, I didn't see your comment. I really like the second card, somebody says. Um, all right, so there are some cards. Um, I kind of wish I did have blue. Blue is kind of my color, but I was in the mood for green today. So thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. And um, look all over for inspiration. Like I said, I went to Hallmark just to be inspired, and this is what I came up with. So thank you for joining me, friends. I appreciate it, and I will be with you next week. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, I don't know. I don't have any thoughts for next week yet. So that's a week away. Thank you very much. I appreciate, I appreciate you watching. Bye for now.